nothing change. There will be nothing that will separate us from the love of God. I want you to get your babies, get your children, get auntie in them, get uncle Bubba. I want you to wake up your husband, wake up your wife, call somebody on the telephone, tell them that the Southern St. Paul Nation in conjunction with the Calvary Baptist Church of Pacoima, we are live, we are on the air, and all is well. Jehovah is our God, and in another we will not trust, in another we will not serve. I want you to do it, I want you to do it. I need you to pick up the telephone. I need you to grab your babies, gather around in the kitchen, in the living room, in the family quarters, all right there in your bedroom. I want to do it like the church is full, like the sanctuary is packed. I will bless the Lord at all times, and His praises shall continually be in my mouth. My soul shall make her boast in the Lord. The uncle shall hear thereof and be glad. Oh, magnify the Lord with me. Let us exalt his name together. This poor man cried, the Lord heard me, and the Lord delivered me out of all of my fears. This poor man cried, and the Lord heard me, and he delivered me out of all of my worries. This poor man cried, and the Lord delivered me from COVID-19, from cancer, from HIV, from sickness, from disease, from malady, from infirmities, from trouble, from pestilence, from plagues. This poor man cried, and the Lord heard me and delivered me from all of my fears. I gotta go. Oh, taste and see that the Lord is good. Blessed is the man that put his trust in him. You've been officially called to worship online. Call somebody. Pick up the telephone. Gather around. Tell them the Southern St. Paul Nation in conjunction with the Calvary Baptist Church of Pacoima. All is well. Listen, our singers, resident psalmists of our ministries, they are coming to lead us in worship right where you are. If you have to jump, jump. If you need to dance, dance. If you need to clap, clap. Sing along. Join in with us at the point of contact. Touch your hands to that computer screen. Put your hands on that screen. Listen, though there is isolation, there will be intimacy. Intimacy will prevail. We will be connected. We will be sustained in Jesus' mighty name. Our resident psalmists, our singers, they are coming to lead us today. Father in worship, God bless you. We'll be back. Well, praise the Lord, family. Psalm 63 3 declares, Because your loving kindness is better than life, my lips will rejoice. I will praise you as long as I live. And in your name, will I lift my hands. So, family, wherever you are this morning, we want to invite you into this worship experience. And we exalt the name of the Lord. May the name of the Lord be spread abroad. Come on, clap your hands wherever you are this morning. Exalt his name. Hallelujah. Father, we exalt you. We glorify you. And we lift you in the 
over the world, particularly all over this region, you are listening to the Covenant Connection broadcast. This is your humble servant, Pastor Xavier Thompson, and this is my girlfriend, y'all, First Lady of our churches, Lady Renita Thompson. Listen, Southern St. Paul Calvary, all of our partners, all of our friends, all of our supporters, we welcome you. We welcome you. Though you are in isolation, we want you to know that we want to remain intimate with you. Hallelujah. Grab your Bibles right where you are, wherever you may be, around the kitchen, in the living room. Grab your Bibles. Our scripture reading for today is coming from Isaiah, the book of Isaiah. Chapter 40, verses 28 through 31. Listen, right there, hear ye the word of the Lord. Has thou not known, has thou not heard, that the everlasting God, the Lord, the creator of the ends of the earth, he fainteth not, neither is he weary, there is no searching of his understanding. He giveth power to the faint, and to them who have no might, he increaseth strength. Here's the promise, friends. But they that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up on wings as eagles. They shall run and not be weary. They shall walk and not faint. The word of God for the people of God. And right there in your home, in your space, let the church say, Amen. There's no distance when it comes to God. There's no distance in prayer. We serve the omnipresent God. He is here in this sanctuary. He is there in your home, in your automobiles, at work. The four corners of the earth, the north, east, South, West, the Lord is there. Right where you are, I want you to lift your hands. I want you to bow your heads. And I want you to close your eyes. Right where you are. Right where you are. Father, in the mighty name of Jesus, we come just to bless you, to worship you, and to praise your magnificent name. For you alone are worthy and worthy to be praised. God, if we ever needed you before, we sure enough need you now. God, you've always been there for us. You've always made a way for us. And Lord, we're standing on faith right now, knowing that you will do nothing different now. God, we give everything unto you. We bind fear. We bind confusion. We bind defeat in the name of Jesus. We claim victory. And we walk victoriously in your name during this season, during this time, during this hour, God. We pray, oh Lord, that you would touch the people listening to this broadcast this morning, joining the Southern Missionary Baptist Church and the Covenant Connection, Lord, needing something from you all today. God, we pray that you would meet every need according to your riches and glory, which is in heaven. Father, you never failed us before, and we know that you will not do it now. We pray, God, that we will be encouraged throughout this service, that you would magnify our lives, magnify our faith in you, God. Give us endurance to run, to keep on going. Even in the midst of darkness, we shall be the light. God, we pray that the word that will go forth will bless our lives, to help us, God, on every hand, bless our families, our friends, our neighbors, our jobs. This world is in need of you, oh God. Do what 
what you're doing, do it best. We love you. And we pray this prayer by faith in Jesus' name. Amen. Oh, hallelujah. But what prayer can't do just cannot be done. These are unprecedented times and these are the times that try the souls of men. It is a uh, eerie feeling driving in this morning uh, with my wife and children in tow. Um, no traffic on the freeway as usual. Um, silence and solitude is all around us, but our Savior is on the throne. I want to welcome you aboard. Um, we will be here every Sunday at 10 a.m. and every Wednesday at 7 o'clock p.m. Nothing will stand in the way of us getting this word, this gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ out to you and to the world. To know that um, you are watching us to know that our labor is not in vain. If you can, those who are watching by Facebook Live, we want to interact with you. We ask that you will push the like button. Give us a comment. Say amen. Say praise the Lord. Say preach, pastor. Amen. Say sing, um, psalmists and play musicians. Um, we need your support. We want to interact. We want to know that we are reaching you and um, being a blessing to your life. I thank God for the staff here at the Southern St. Paul Church, also the Calvary Baptist Church of Pacoima. I tell you, many times before this crisis, um, I've been inundated with questions. X, how do you do what you do? And my answer before this crisis is the same since this crisis began. Save the grace and enabling power of the Lord Jesus Christ. I am one whom God has so favored to have good people around me. I mean, um, um, as Moses had Aaron and Ur. Pastor Xavier Thompson is blessed of the Lord Jesus Christ to have competent, uh, loyal, committed staff, individuals, ministry leaders, admin workers. And I say that this morning not to brag, but I just say that as a boast in the Lord Jesus Christ. I am grateful for those whom he has surrounded around my life and around my ministry. Listen, I'm praying for pastors. I'm praying for churches. I'm praying for the people of God that during this time, we will not crumble. We will not fall apart. We will not grow weary in doing well, knowing that we're going to reap if we faint not. This is our time, body of Christ, people of God, sons and daughters of the Covenant Connection family. This is our season. This is our time, our hour. This is when cream rises to the top. And God, listen, he proves to be just whom we believe and whom he says that he is. Listen, um, First Lady, these are some difficult times, some dark times. Um, I want to thank you for being a wife. I want to thank you for being such a loving and attentive mother to our three children. Even during this time, I've seen how you have planned and prepared and populated the house with all of the essentials and the goods. Say a word to those who are listening uh, to this telecast and to this broadcast and um, give them a word of encouragement, a word of hope. What can they be doing during this season of COVID-19? Well, people that are watching, we know there are a lot of myths out there. So let's just first start by saying, get rid of all of those myths. We know that we're trusting in God and standing on faith and on the word. 
but just in a practical sense. Mm -hmm. Thinking of things that we can share that you can do in your home as you're living day to day. First thing we're hearing so much of is what? Wash your hands. Wash your hands. Wash your hands. Mm -hmm. I, I seen a sign at my job that says, when you're washing your hands, sing the happy birthday songs two times. And that lets it know it's about 15 or 20 seconds that you're washing your hands. If you don't have soap and water, get the hand sanitizers on. The wipes, the wet naps, anything you can do to keep your hands clean at this time is critical. Next, stay in if you're sick. Don't go out, don't socialize, try to stay in. Build up your immune system, eat well, stay hydrated, take your vitamins, those necessary things that can help us practically. Also, avoid any contact with others that are sick. Social distancing, of course, is something huge that we're hearing now. Staying six feet away, or at least six feet of distance in between, that's critical. We love everyone. Just be careful of your interactions and who you're letting in close to you. Keep your hands, especially if they're not clean, out of your eyes, out of your nose, out of your mouth. Those things can contaminate. And just like the regular flu and cold, Prevention methods, those are what we need to put in place now. And even in the midst of all that, stand in faith because we know that God, just as he's seen us through before, he will yet see us through again. Don't get weary. Don't get fretful. Don't get in bondage, just thinking, oh my goodness, what's happening now? What's happening now is that the Lord is speaking to us. Yes. He's helping us to remember that our lives matter, that we need to take care of ourselves, and that he's just doing something to get our attention. And we're telling you today, Lord, we're ready, and you have our attention. Father, whatever you're doing in this season, don't do it without me. Do you want in on this? Yes. Do you want in on this? Just right there where you are, wherever you may be listening, just lift your hands and say, Father, even me, even me, let some drops fall on me. Listen. Um, there's a lot of fear that is being pumped into society and we don't want to water down the COVID-19. We don't want to send um, the wrong message. It is serious. We are taking it serious. Our tiers of leadership at all of our campuses with a united front, we thought it wise in compliance of um, the CDC and our local and national state leaders to be in compliance because uh, here at the Covenant Connection Church Families um, you are important to us I want you to know Southern St. Paul Calvary if there be no you there will be no us so we want you to know that you are our priority pastor is praying for you um, the First Lady is praying for you. Um, the tears of leadership, our church, um, those leaders are praying for you. And here's the good news. We're praying for one another. If you just joined us, you have tuned in to our telecast emanating from the main sanctuary in Los Angeles, the Southern Missionary Baptist Church. We are the Covenant Connection Church family, the St. Paul Baptist Church of Acoima, along with um, the Calvary Baptist Church located in the Northeast San Fernando Valley. We want to stay connected to you. We want you to stay connected to us right where you are throughout this broadcast. I want you to interact with me. I want you to interact with us um, on Facebook, on Instagram on our official YouTube church channel. Um, we want to hear from you of how we are being a blessing, of how we are staying connected with you. Um, our governor on March the 19th, as you know, sent a letter to the president projecting that roughly 26 million Californians alone that's about 56% of the state's population um, could potentially be infected with the virus over the next eight weeks. I believe that, listen, 
Christ is over Corona and victory is over virus. They messed up when they gave this disease, this virus, a name. You know, they shouldn't have called it a name. They always mess up when you give it a name. When you give cancer a name, you didn't mess up. When you didn't give in diabetes a name, you have messed up. When you name COVID-19, the coronavirus, you didn't mess up the coronavirus. The reason why you have messed up when you have given it a name, because wherefore God has highly exalted Jesus and has given
that you can click to give. You can click to give. Or download our app on Google Play at the Google Play Store. Go to the App Store, download our app, SMBCLA. SMBCLA. Southern St. Paul Calvary. There's some very important information. If it's not on your screen yet, it shall appear on your screen in the coming moments. I need you to take this time. Even if you're not a member of these three campuses, but you would like to support, you would like to sow your seed today, you would like to be a blessing to the body of Christ, would you do that? Right where you are, don't hesitate. I need you to do that. Even as, watch it, you give unto God, God promises to give unto you. And you can't beat God's giving, no matter how hard you try. But the more he gives to you, the more, or the more you give to him, the more he will give to you. Right where you are, right where you are, right where you are, take a moment. I need you to give today. You say, Pastor, I don't know what tomorrow is going to bring. Take no thought for tomorrow. Tomorrow is going to take care of itself. I don't need you to get in fear. I want you to stay in faith. I want you to stay in faith knowing that God is going to provide for you. I want you to stay in faith knowing that God is going to meet your need. Let there be no difference between where you are at home whether you give there or you have you give in the sanctuary would you do that i want to pray i want to pray for you that the spirit of generosity that the spirit of liberality will be upon your life father in the name of jesus bless that woman that man now who is watching and struggling, do I, do I give, do I not give? I pray in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth that you will release an anointing now that destroys the yoke, cause them to know as they trust you, you promise to make ways out of no ways. Bless the seed now. Bless the giver now. Honor the faith of your people. In Jesus' name. It is so. So it is. Let it be. Our singers are coming. And they want to give you an opportunity. I want to give you an opportunity to have time not to rush through this. But let's take a moment and let's sow into the ministry. Calvary, I need your continued support. Southern St. Paul, I need your continued support. I live to give. I give to live. This seed may leave my hands, but this seed will never leave my life. I cast my bread upon the waters in not many days. This seed is coming back to me in the area of my life that I needed the most. According to heaven's timetable, by faith in Jesus' name. Amen. Let's see.
social distancing, let me tell you there is a great deal of spiritual intimacy in this hour that try our faith, that try our souls, where my fear is the order of the day and many are worried and afraid. Really don't know what to make of it all. I want you to know right where you are that there is a word from the Lord. As the Holy Spirit shall guide today, I want to preach from the subject by way of a question. Where is God when you need him? Where is God when you need him? Inquiring minds want to know where is God in this? Right now, right where you are. Secure your Bibles, be it on paperback, leather bound, iPhone, iPad, tablet, or any Android or electronic device. Get your Bibles right now, right where you are. Hurry up, hurry up, hurry up, get your Bibles. Man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceedeth out of the mouth of God. Turn with me to the book of Psalms. Psalm 46. Psalm 46. Psalm 46. It reads, God is our refuge and strength. A very present help in trouble. Therefore, we will not fear. Even though the earth be removed, and though the mountains be carried in the midst of the sea. Stop right there. That's all I want to deal with today. God is our refuge and strength. A very present help in the time of trouble. Therefore, we will not fear. Did you hear that? We will not fear, even though the earth be removed, and though the mountains be carried in the midst of the sea. In this hour, it is those who know who God is and where God is are those who are not worried, those who are not panicking, those who are not pulling their hair out. We know who he is. We know where he is. Where is God when you need him most? The scene of Psalm 46, beloved, is a scene that of a group of refugees. And by definition, a refugee is a person or a group of persons who run for safety in the time of war. A refugee is one who is on the run during the times of upheaval and crises and pandemic and pestilence, war, storms. A refugee is when a group of people or an individual are under attack. They are bound or when a famine is in the land a mass group of people, perhaps even an individual, become displaced out of position. And they are on the run, seeking another land, seeking another kingdom, seeking a refuge, somewhere to go, a hiding place. 
And if they do not find a refuge, a hiding place, then that individual or mass group of people will ultimately die. What are they to do? They're out of position, they are displaced, they are on the run. There are three things that I want to bring to your attention right where you are who is listening to me that the text gives us today some intelligence. Number one, write it down where you are. I want to drive this home to you. God is a refugee for, God is rather a refuge for the refugee. God is a refuge for the refugee. Number two, God is strength for the stress. He is our refuge and our strength. Not only is he our refuge for the refugee, God is our strength for the stress. Thirdly, today I want to drive home to you that God is help for the hopeless. He's our refuge, he's our strength, and God is our help. Open your Bibles, the writer says there in verse number one that God is our refuge and strength, a very present help in trouble. Don't you miss that? Because if I am to accept and embrace and receive God as my refuge and my strength, and if I am to enjoy the benefit of God as being my help in the time of trouble, get this, my acceptance of the one is my acknowledgement of the other. My acceptance of one is my acknowledgement of the other. In other words, for me to accept God as being my refuge and my strength, a very present help in the time of trouble, I am then acknowledging that in my life and in this world, there will be times of unavoidable, unannounced trouble. If I am to accept God as being refuge and strength, as being a very present help in the time of trouble, then I am acknowledging that there will be times of inescapable adversity. That there will be things that come into my life that I must endure. I must experience. I must go through. How may I put it? For God to reveal himself as light there must be some darkness. For me to confess that God is a healer, then I am acknowledging the probability and or potential that sickness will invade my ranks. If I boast of God as being a way maker, and he is, that is to say that God can make ways where there is no way. If I boast of him as being a way maker, then I am acknowledging that it is conceivable that life can box me in. That life can trap me. That life can corner me. That life present a second a set of circumstances where it seems as if there is no exit if I am to say he's this I'm acknowledging the probability of that so when the writer says God is my refuge and my strength a very present help in the time of trouble I cannot Quote that 
and then turn around and become unraveled when trouble comes my way. I am not exempt from trouble. Hence, I am to expect it. Knowing that when it comes, and not if it comes, but when trouble comes, though I am not exempt from it, he will exonerate me. I want you to know that God's grace is sufficient for you. I am to expect to have a faith challenge. I am to expect sickness to attempt to invade my body. Job chapter 14 verse number 1 says that a man that is born of a woman is but of a few days and those days are full of trouble. 2 Corinthians chapter 4 verses 8 through 9 says that we are troubled on every side yet not distressed we are perplexed but not in despair we are persecuted but not forsaken we are cast down but not destroyed James chapter 1 verses 2 and 3 says my brethren count it all joy when you fall into diverse temptations knowing this that the trying of your faith work the development of your patience but let patience have her perfect work that you may be complete lacking nothing I am to expect it trouble guarantees God's presence Whenever there is trouble, he doesn't have to show up, friends, because he is already there. Whenever there is a crisis such as the one we find ourselves in and we ask ourselves, where is God when I need him most? Listen, beloved, he is right there with you. Your prayer is today, Father, make your presence known. presence known unto me. Let me be able to identify you. Let me be able to hear you. Let me be able to discern you. Let me be sensitive to you and you alone in this hour. Where is God when you need him? I want to submit by way of the text that God is where he was when you did need him. And there is never a time when you did not need him. He's in the same place. He's with you. He's in the midst of you. God is our refuge and strength. A very present help in the time of trouble. The text is indicative of the fact that trouble, crises, catastrophe will come. But like when you are, I want you to shout it when it comes, not if it comes. When it comes, the Lord is with you. Isn't that good news? That in the midst of overwhelming, unpleasant, undesirable, seemingly unbearable circumstances that God is right there with you. Listen, trouble will come. Storms will rise. The winds will blow. Burdens will get heavy. Life will get hard. Friends will get few. Money will run low. Times will get rough. The brook will dry up. Your faith will be tested. Catastrophe will happen. But Isaiah chapter 26 verse 3 says that thou will keep you in perfect whose mind is stayed on him. All of this 
going on in our world, COVID-19, is leaving many to ponder and to wonder, where is God? Where is God in times like these? Where is God when I need him? And if you ever needed the Lord, we sure do need him. Now, I want to encourage you to look for him, be sensitive to his voice, be sensitive to his lead. Isaiah chapter 43, verses 1 and 2. Get it. It's in your Bible. Hurry up. Get it, get it, get it, get it. Isaiah chapter 43, verses 1 and verse 2 says, Fear not, I have redeemed you. I have called you by my name. You are mine, says the Lord. Verse number 2 of Isaiah chapter 43. He says, listen, when you pass through the waters, I will be with you. When you go through the rivers, they will not overflow you. When you walk through the fire, you shall not be burned, nor the flame shall scorch you. Where is God? God is in the midst. God is with you. He's your refuge, refugee. He's your strength, stress one. He's your help, hopeless one. What you crying about? What are you afraid of? Let not your hearts be troubled. Ye believe in God, believe also in me. I'm wrapping up, but hear me when I tell you. God is committed to keep you. God is committed to sustain you. God is committed to provide for you. God is committed to defend you. God is committed to cover you. God is committed Read Psalms 46. Look what it opens with. God. Y'all see that? I want to build your faith today by reminding you who you have in your corner. I want to build your faith today by reminding you who's on your team, who's got your back. The first word of the psalm it opens up with God. Not the government. Not your employer. Not your family. Not your boo. But right where you are, I want to remind you who's on your side. God. When someone asks you, who, 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 who's taking care of you? You say, God. When someone asks you, why are you not afraid? You say, God. Do you have any help, God? How you gonna survive, God? The one who merely spoke and the heavens were created and who by his own breath the stars was born. The God who rules and is super bruised by his own power, the ever-present, the all-knowing, the all-powerful, self-sustaining, self-sufficient God, he will see you through. Pastor X, why are you so confident? Why are you so bold? Why are you talking so big? My testimony is I know in whom I believe and I am fully so persuaded that he is able to keep that which I have committed to him. Too late for me to get in fear. It's too late for me to panic. It's too late for me to get into depression. It's too late for 
for me to tuck my tail and run. I've been walking with him long enough. You can't make me doubt it. I know too much about him. I know that he can heal the sick and he can raise the dead. I know that he is a miracle worker. I know that he's a strong hold in the day of trouble. I know in whom I believe. This is not your first movie. This is not your first rodeo. This is not your first time of crisis. Though we have never been through anything like this before. But what makes you think he's a different God now? If he brought Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego through the fiery furnace and Daniel took through the lion's den, if he raised his own son Jesus from the dead, if he shook the prison doors and Peter and Paul and Silas walked out into their liberty and freedom, what made you think he is different now? If he did it before, he can do it again. If he brought us through amen, trials and tribulations and tough times, he's going to bring us through this plague, this virus, this pestilence. If he brought Big Mama through, if he brought Granddaddy through, if he brought generations that came before us through, it is no secret to what God can do what he has done for others. He will do the same for you. Job said, I'm looking for God. I went to my right. I went to my left. I perceived him. Now I cannot behold him, said Job. But he turns to the right and Job says, I cannot see him. Here he Yeah. And because 
cause, he's your refuge and strength. And because he's present, I'm closing. He says, fear not. You hear that woman? You hear that man? Young girl, young boy, mother, father. Fear not. Lift up your hands, O oh, ye gates. Be ye lifted up, ye everlasting doors. And the kingdom glory shall come in. Who is this kingdom glory? The Lord strong and mighty. The Lord mighty and shall. You will make it. His anger endureth but for a moment. But his favor is in life. Life. Weeping may endure but for a night. But joy cometh in the morning. If you don't know Jesus in the pardon of your sins, I want to invite you right where you are to invite him into your heart. It's hard enough to make it with Jesus. It's impossible to make it without Jesus. You need it. Come on, right where you are, say, Heavenly Father, save me. Say, Heavenly Father, come into my heart. Father, I confess that I am a sinner in need of a Savior. I believe by faith that you raised your son, Jesus, from the dead with all power in his hand. And one day he's coming back. Come into my heart. Fill me with the Holy Ghost. If you've been out of church, I want you to wait this. Stay at home order is lifted. I want you to run to church. Find you a good Bible-believing church where you can work out your soul salvation. The Bible says for you not to forsake the assembly of yourselves together. You need a connection. You need a covering. You need to be in church. Listen, I'm praying for you. That God will heal the sick even in this hour. That God will save the lost even in this hour. That God will move mightily by his spirit in this hour. Raise that. Come on. Until then, I'm ready.